Hey Vinyl Community, it's Robert Fithin, and this video is going to be a little bit different than any I've done before. Today I want to look at Hollywood movies and TV shows that show vinyl records and turntables and see how accurate they are. Have you ever been watching a movie really into it, and maybe you've got a friend with you, or maybe you yourself are really into motorcycles? And you see the Harley Davidson go by, but it sounds like a Suzuki. And you're like, that's not a Harley Davidson sound. Or maybe somebody, an airplane takes off. It's like, that is not the way that airplane would sound. That is not the way that gun would sound. You know, whatever you're into, you know that the, the, the effects or, or the picture or whatever does not match reality. And it just pulls you right out of the movie. Like you're immersed in this movie and all of a sudden a big error like that comes up like a sound effect thing, and you're just like, oh, man, it just pulls you right out of the movie. Well, I'm obviously into records and music and stuff like that. So going way, way, way back, back into like, you know, the 80s, I would see records and stuff in movies and be like, that is not what that record looks like. That is, that turntable would not have been out in the 60s and, and all kinds of stuff like that. So I want to take some examples today and see who got it right and who got it wrong? Let's start with the movie Almost Famous from 2000, directed by Cameron Crowe. Awesome movie. If you're a music fan and you haven't seen this, you definitely got to check this out at one point. There's also an extended cut as well. The boy here, he's looking through albums. Uh, these look pretty legitimate for the time. And he's eventually going to get to the Who Tommy album. Got a little note there saying, listen to Tommy with a candle burning and you'll see your entire future. So he gets the album. Looks like it is on the DECA label. So, so, so far, so good. Puts it on the turntable. He's going to put the uh, stylus on it and we're hearing sparks okay which is actually track three uh he's actually playing you didn't hear it which is track two. Oh man cameron crow so close actually i expected a little better from cameron crow let's it's still a fantastic movie though but if you saw it in a movie theater in springfield illinois in 2000 and you heard somebody go what in the audience that was me yeah, he's listening to Sparks, and that's that's not Sparks. That's not where it is on the record. Almost close. Let's move on to the Royal Tenenbaums here. We're going to play what looks like a monophonic version of the Rolling Stones uh, between the buttons. And the label is correct there. It's the red monophonic label. Going to play She Smiled Sweetly, and oh, again, so close. That's actually the second to last track. It looks like what she's playing is Ruby Tuesday. Again. So close, so close. Had the right cover, the right label, wrong needle position for the uh, Royal Tenenbaums and the Rolling Stones. She smiled sweetly. Let's check out a TV show. Here's Lost. This is the first episode of season five called Because You Left. We see a guy putting a record on an old style record changer. Looks like a strange looking record label. A lot of dirt on the side of us there. And we're hearing Willie Nelson Shotgun Willie on some sort of strange white and blue label. I checked, that's never been released on any label that looks like that, unfortunately. Uh, I don't think that record label exists. It could be uh, the symbol of the Dharma group that this guy's a part of, and they've got their own records, apparently, that they press. Lost is a magical island where I guess anything is possible, so we won't get too nitpicky on this. We'll just call it a magical Willie Nelson album that does not exist anywhere. This is from the album Shotgun Willie, and it should have an Atlantic label. That uh, song doesn't appear on too many compilations either. But I did look each one of them up and none of them have a label like that. Horror movie time, don't get too scared. This is Annabelle. By the way, I've met Annabelle the doll, uh, to make a short story even shorter. This looks like a KTEL label, but it's not one that I've ever seen before and it's not any that contain the song Cherish. Now Cherish does appear on a few KTEL uh, records, including this one from Australia with this blue label that I wasn't previously familiar with, but none of them on this pink KTEL label. Why would you make a special label that has KTEL on it and just the word cherish? That just took me right out of the movie when I saw that fake KTEL label. Just make a fake pink label with nothing on it or whatever. I can understand why directors don't want to use the exact label because they don't want you to pay attention to that. It's sort of like a symbolic thing, but why make a fake KTEL? That just really never made sense to me. But uh, yeah, she turns it off and then the ghost goes ahead and turns it back on, scratching that record when she does it. Now, you've probably figured out at this point, we're really geeking out here seriously, but if you're a big record and, and music fan like I am, seeing bullshit labels like this can really just pull you right out of the movie that you're watching and go like, what did they do that for? Why didn't they take the extra two minutes and, and do it right? Now, if you're watching this and thinking, well, uh, 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 nobody's perfect, man. Like, you make mistakes. 
and stuff. Yeah, but I'm also not making multi-million dollar Hollywood productions with a crew of a hundreds, uh, including a technical advisor whose literal job it is to make sure mistakes like this don't happen. So there's the difference there, but still free, feel free to put that comment right in the uh, uh, comment section, how I think I'm perfect or you're a nerd or, or whatever. That's Those are always so awesome. Uh, anyway, um, back to the video. Beatles fans, it's your time. The 1978 movie, the hilarious movie. You gotta check this one out if you've never seen it. Kinda hard to find. I wanna hold your hand. Here they are in a record store, seemingly when Meet the Beatles is first released. Now, I didn't get a shot at the back cover, so I don't know if this is a first pressing for real or not because the producer credit's not on the first pressing of this, but something I noticed, a couple of things strange. Not actually a mistake, just kind of odd, that there's no monophonic pressings, just all stereo pressings, which I don't think that's a thing that would have happened. Plus, none of these are sealed. These are new records right out of the record store. I don't think the record clerk would have unsealed all these and, stole, and sold them to a bunch of screaming girls. But yeah, they're all stereophonic, at least they don't have the gold RIAA on it. Again, not exactly a mistake, just a little little off there on the uh, I Want to Hold Your Hand, Meet the Beatles. Let's take a break from showing the shortcomings of Hollywood movie making and check out this scene from Blow Up from 1966. Not a mistake, I just wanted to show you how certain people used to treat their records back in the 60s. They just used to set a bag on the turntable and knock the, knock the tone arm off. So when you see these old records from the Animals and the Rolling Stones and, and, and the, you know, you, you get an idea of why they look like that now. Let's check out the Shawshank Redemption as Tim Robbins plays an Italian opera. Now, I had to do some research on this. So for this one, I could be wrong, but from what I was able to look up, it does look like he is playing from a legitimate 78 box and uh, on a real record player from the time and is playing the correct label and starting it at the beginning. So uh, as far as I know, Shawshank Redemption gets it right. Let's move on to Indecent Proposal. Again, kind of a side note here. He doesn't really show the record, but I remember watching this in the theater back when it was first out in uh, the early 90s and seeing Robert Redford's character's turntable here and really not even understanding what a lot of that was. It looked like a stopwatch or some sort of compass on the top of it. I had never seen a record weight like that and you know, a label like that. I had no idea what was going on. And it just looked so uh, wild to me to see a turntable like that. And of course, now you see him all the time in the vinyl community. And I, of course, went on to see them there. He's got actual tubes and everything. So this guy was, was kind of ahead of his time with the audiophiles, or at least right in time with audiophiles. And you got to remember, this came out in uh, the early 90s when um, most people had switched to CDs. And here this millionaire is that's paying to sleep with Demi Moore's character. Uh, got some serious turntable here. So uh, props to... Uh, indecent proposal looks like a lot of movies that are out these days and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna show all those but a lot of them have turntables movies like x-men first class laura croft tomb raider suits the mechanic they all have either these projects or riga players some of the characters wouldn't i don't think would have a turntable like that based on their lifestyle of always being on the run but whatever and they just keep showing up in movies i think some of it's product placement at this point let's move on Jackie Brown starring the incredible Pam Greer, also Robert Forrester in this scene, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Now, come on, Quentin, don't let us down. She's going to pull out an album from the Delphonics, going to put that on the turntable. She says that, you know, she doesn't want to buy all of her albums again on CD. You got to remember, this is the 90s as well. And she puts it on. Oh, come on. Right in the, not in the middle, but looks like it's about 15 seconds into the song. And, uh, you know, the song sounds like it's just starting. So, again, why do we just, why do we have a scene like that? Just start the record at the beginning. It would have been perfect. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here he is, my hero, Dr. Johnny Fever, WKRP in Cincinnati. You could do an entire video on wrong records, not even playing it. You know, he's not, he doesn't wear headphones. That's not going to work. He's playing Teach Your Children on some sort of blue label. This took some time, but I looked up everywhere that song has been released on vinyl and there are no blue labels. Closest I got was a Taiwan uh, bootleg that uh, has a blue label of uh, Deja Vu. Because he does say from the album Deja Vu. And now he's playing Elvis Presley Return to Sender on a white label. I'm not familiar with that either, but I'm definitely not looking up all the Elvis Presley Return to Sender variants. 
Let's check out the AMC show Mad Men. This is uh, from season five, episode eight, Lady Lazarus. She's got the Beatles revolver uh, in her hand and he's gonna listen to it and she tells him, uh, I think to listen to Tomorrow Never Knows. Either way, that's what he's going to listen to. So he's got the revolver. He's looking at it. He's gonna put it on the turntable. Uh, still in the shrink. Taking it out, looks like the uh, capital label is, uh, you know, the right for the period there. He's turned it over. And, uh, you know, again, the old style record changer with the tall spindle on it. And let's put the needle all the way up. up. Yes, there it is. Tomorrow Never Knows. Actually, the last song on the side looks like this episode of Mad Men got it right. Now, here's one that I actually don't have any footage for because this movie is actually kind of hard to find and, and impossible to stream. It's Helter Skelter from 1976, the all about Charles Manson and everything. Not exactly a factual movie, but an entertaining one. And Steve Railsback, I think, does a great job as Charles Manson. They mention the White Album, of course, in there. If you, I'm not going to go into the history of all of that. Just suffice it all to say that the police are in the police station and they're looking at the White Album and the one policeman's got it out and he's like, oh, look here, just like written on the wall in blood piggies look at that uh piggies is on this side see apple records have completely different labels for each side and that'd be a good video too i wonder how many labels are com you know label are completely different on side a than side b apple is like that and he actually yeah you have piggies right there and then piggies is of course right there so yeah that's a flaw too here's a movie called the strangers this is another more current uh movie and what you're hearing is merle haggard and the song mama tried playing on the turntable and as you can see that is a uh, some sort of white label with some sort of uh rural kind of font on it and uh yep that does not uh, there's no mama tried by merle haggard on anything like that it does appear on a few compilations most of those are capital compilations with the actual orange capital label. Mama Tried originally appeared on the uh, black with the rainbow rim, uh, but th that's not represented here. And uh, that's a pretty well licensed song. So I, I even looked up some like unofficial like compilations. None of them have the label they are showing in this movie, The Strangers. Just just get a capital record and put it on. What, what would have been the problem? So that just about wraps things up, but we got one uh, part here I want to show you for the CD fans, for the compact disc people. This always used to happen in all kinds of movies. When they would show a CD, like in this scene from Nine and a Half Weeks, the CD goes in upside down. They don't want you to see what the CD is, so instead of getting a CD with a nondescript uh, cover or label on it or whatever, they would always put them in upside down. That CD is not going to play. Same thing happens here in the Paula Abdul video for it's just the way that you love me. And it's many, many more movie scenes than just these. But I wonder how many people saw one of these scenes and, and put their CDs in upside down and then wondered why they wouldn't work. Thanks, Hollywood. And one last scene, this one featuring Robin Williams from the 1987 movie, Good Morning Vietnam. You can't do any real label things here because it's just a montage. So you can't really say these are mistakes because they show several different um, records playing while he's jumping around being completely obnoxious on the air. I do not like DJs like that. Uh, but yeah, he's got uh, London records playing. He's got MGM records playing. He's throwing records around just like a radio DJ would not do. Uh, Good Morning Vietnam starring uh, Robin Williams to wrap things up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it just comes from years of watching movies and uh, and being frustrated, like I said, just being pulled right out of the movie, seeing something ridiculous. And it's like something like Almost Famous. It's like, couldn't they have just put the tone arm like an inch more over and they would have had it right? Same thing with the Royal Tenenbaums. But anyway, I hope you got something out of this uh, video. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing. If you haven't done that, like the video uh, because I still have people who are upset about the Steely Dan thing who are just going to thumb this down. So please uh, consider thumbing up the video if you liked it. And once again, thank you to the vinyl community for all the great videos. I'm still watching a lot of them, still love a lot of the channels. And uh, I will uh, talk to you again next time.